Welcome to Write With Love. I'm your host, Sarah Williams, best-selling author, speaker, and creative entrepreneur. Each week, I chat to passionate and inspiring authors about their journey in creative writing. Some are traditionally published, some do it themselves. Everyone's journey is different, and everyone has something interesting to say. We all love love and love what we do. Today's show is brought to you by our amazing fans and supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the show and get some awesome bonus episodes, go to patreon.com forward slash Sarah Williams author to learn more. Now here's today's show. G'day and welcome to Write With Love. Today I'm chatting to New York Times best-selling and five-time Rita Award finalist, Grace Burrows. Thanks for joining me today, Grace. It's wonderful to be here. Brilliant. Of course, we're we're talking to you from Maryland in the United States, so it's always great to talk to an American. Um, Please tell us your story and share with us how you got into this writing career. I have always been a writer, um, whether it's uh, keeping a journal or uh, corresponding with a large family, excuse me, but it never occurred to me that I would be a published author. Uh, I read romance voraciously as I was going through college and law school. I um, then single parenting romance was very much my uh, guilty pleasure. Um, You know, because as a single mom, you can get tired and isolated and overwhelmed and there's nothing like a happily ever after to put the world back in perspective. Um, but eventually my daughter grew up and I had time. I had, um, I guess, confidence. Um, and one night I was sitting in the law office uh, working on a deadline document. You know, some motion was due tomorrow um, and it was cold. And I'd reached the point where I was my productivity had really slowed down. I'd been at it too long. And I told myself, I'll take a break. And I always have a book with me. I'll just read one chapter. Um, And, you know, then recharged, I will come back and knock out this motion. Well, uh, it was not an author I was all that familiar with, but I must have hit her off book. Mm. Uh, The book that just, you know, maybe the deadline overcame the author or whatever but it, it hit me wrong and i had the pernicious thought that many an author has i bet i could write one of these and i just started writing and you know boom first few scenes came out and it was fun and i didn't want to work on that motion um but i did i got it in on time but i had started writing what eventually became uh gareth the first of my lonely lords and I just wrote for fun. I just wrote because it was a happy place. I was raised without television, and I raised my kid without a television in the house. I still don't have a television in the house. This frees up an awful lot of time. It does. So uh, I just started writing, and uh, it didn't occur to me to get the books published. But I have six brothers and sisters, and they began to say to me things like, when are you going to get that stuff published? And this would have been in 2008, 2009. Self-publishing was not really a thing yet. Mm-hmm. Um, they meant, you know, when are you just going to, like, pluck a contract out of the sky? <laughs> and uh, I, I, I know publishing is difficult, you know, particularly traditional publishing. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody said you're more likely to get hit by lightning mm-hmm. than to end a traditional contract. Um, but I also know uh, that there was this organization, RWA, and I had heard they will help you perfect your craft. They will help you get published. Um, So I went to an RWA chapter conference, and I was, I didn't know anybody, Um, and this was one of those conferences that happens over the weekend, and the first thing you do on Friday night is an agent and editor panel. And all of these very knowledgeable, competent people were sitting in the front of the room and they were using terms I didn't understand. 
you know, ARC and GMC and HEA and big black moment. I had no idea what they were talking about. Then I, you know, sort of collapsed. I'll never be published. This is pointless. I'll just go up to my room and write. Yeah. But I went up to my room by way of the bar. <laughs> And I stopped, I got myself a white Russian, and it was pretty good. Uh, I don't drink much, but I figured I'm going to be here all weekend, um, and I'm a grown-up, so why not lubricate the writing a little? And so I had another white Russian, and it was good, too. But then I noticed the lady in line beside me at the bar had a knitting bag, and one of the people on that agent and editor panel had had a knitting bag. And... Uh, I asked her, am I supposed to pitch you? Um, this is probably like the worst way to make a first impression on an industry professional. But she smiled and she said, would you like to pitch me? And at that point, my brain stopped working. I had never pitched anybody. I hadn't practiced the pitch. I didn't know pitching was a thing. Um, and she pulled, I mean, she just interviewed me. What do you write? How many uh, books have you completed? And when I said, I'm not sure, a couple dozen maybe, that is when the uh, exchange became substantive. Mm. You know, because when you run across somebody who has a lot of completed manuscripts, if they are any good, that gives you a lot of options. Yes. If they're not so good, you know, it doesn't help at all. <laughs> <laughs> She, this was Deb Worksman at Sourcebooks, <clears throat> and she was sufficiently interested to ask for partials. And she asked for three, and then three more, and then three more. And she eventually put together um, a trilogy and made me an offer. Wow. So that's how I started down the yellow brick road. Yeah. Oh, that's really fantastic. And it's, it's great to hear that sort of a story, you know, from a, a complete novice to, you know, like that. That's, that's amazing. And you've done 74 books. Have they all been with source books? No, source books and I parted ways amicably, at least for now. Yeah. Um, they did the first 35 or 40 books. Yeah. Um, and some of those titles, you say 74, some are novellas, some are novella duets. Um, so I, I can't say I've written 74 novels mm -hmm. yet. Um, but uh, indie publishing came along. And um, I even source books, who at one point was publishing a book every month for me, um, felt like uh, market saturation had to be factored into their publication schedule. So I had some titles that Sourcebooks wasn't interested in. They were completed manuscripts. I felt like even though they were written a while ago, I had the craft to buff them. And so I self-published them. And I really like self-publishing. <laughs> um, so I do both. I uh, write for Grand Central um, forever. Yeah. And I self-publish. Excellent. We love the self-publishers as well. I'm, I'm a self-publisher and think half the people who come on here are, are indies. So yay, indies. That's awesome. And your books have predominantly historical novels. So um, tell us about writing historical. Do you have a um, particular way of researching or anything like that? Do you get to go and travel? <laughs> I do get to travel. I go to the UK a fair amount. Um, and I think one thing that factors in here is my age. Mm. I am old enough that I recall when the only romances there were were historical. Yeah. Um, you, know, you could have Regency, you could have medieval. There were even a few people dabbling in Victorian, but it wasn't really until Danielle Steele in the 1990s mm. that contemporary romance became a thing. Mm. Uh, and uh, so my preference for historical uh, is somewhat rooted in just the fact that that's where I started reading. And I read there for decades. Um, the other thing is I do have an interest in history. My first uh, university degree was music history. Yeah. And uh, I love how the times shape the people and the people shape the times. Mm -hmm. uh, there's such, our historical narrative is so broad and fascinating. Um, and you ask, what are my, how do I do my research? To the extent possible, uh, I like to dip into original sources so you get the voice of the times. Mm. 
you know, so you can hear how uh, folks in the Regency addressed each other. How did they write? They wrote to each other and, uh, you know, they all sound so erudite and insightful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I think some of that is because when you write with a quill pen, it is a slow, laborious process and you have time to polish the thought, you know, as it travels down your arm onto the page. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas now, you know, we 90 words a minute at the keyboard, pretty much it's stream of consciousness writing for many of us mm -hmm. in many circumstances. Uh, so writing has become a different cognitive process for us than it was for the, the people in my stories. So I'm, I'm, as a reader, I'm drawn to historical romance uh, as a, just as a hobby. I've always loved history and there is sort of the, the connection with music yeah that appreciated from a historical standpoint fantastic so we're talking some regency um i think you've got some scottish uh novels up there too um tell us about some of your books which are some of the ones that you you like the most and and you want to tell our readers about well i love them all <laughs> um the the first book that was published was the air and and H-E-I-R kind of air. I didn't realize when that title was chosen that it doesn't speak so well. Mm. Why would anybody read about air? <laughs> but in this case, it was a ducal air. And uh, Deb Worksman plucked that book out of, you know, a choice of maybe 20 manuscripts mm. because she could make a trilogy of brothers. But also, I think she understood uh, that that was a very representative story for my brand. I am one of seven. Mm -hmm. seven children. Um, and I grew up in a large family. And these three brothers are from a large family. They have five sisters. And uh, I have four brothers. Um, so it was a, a representative story from my perspective as a sibling in a big family. And how do you relate to your different siblings? They're all you, each one is unique. Um, for example, I realized the other day, Pretty much each of my siblings has a different nickname for me, kind of like caller ID. <laughs> um, I can tell who is saying pass the butter, whether they're calling me Gracie or Grace Ann, because two, you know, th that's two different brothers. Um, so the heir was the story of the ducal, um, the ducal heir, uh, and the soldier was his older illegitimate brother. And then the virtuoso was the family musician. And um, I realized that you know, the heir himself studied law. He read law. The virtuoso was a musician. Um, and the soldier had to reconcile his, the, the, the fundamental problem I gave him was an orphaned five-year-old child. Um, and as an attorney, I've done child welfare law. Mm. So I sort of in these first three books, put three very large pieces in my heart. Uh, it was a good place to start. Yeah. Oh, that's absolutely fantastic. This person here, this is, this is... <laughs> do you love our little you cat? Cat. <laughs> I see another one sleeping on the on the counter behind you. That's gorgeous. <laughs> my feet. Right, a veterinarian. That's it. Yeah. So, as well as the historical, you've got um, some nonfiction books as well. So, twelve tweaks to perk up your prose. Uh, is one making a scene is another and putting the h in in h e a which of course stands for happily ever after so um when did you get into writing your nonfiction books well those are more essays than mm. books yep. um they're sort of brief uh i would call them workshop crib sheets mm. uh because i um i do like to present at chapter conferences and i do think uh, I love to work on craft, and I think as writers, um, there's comfort in working on craft because it's one thing we can control. Uh, it's one way we can decide what direction our brand goes. Um, and there's so much about being a writer that you don't control. Mm. Um, that to be able to shape the actual words and control the prose uh, is just gratifying, and it helps me manage anxiety. Um, I actually, in college, um, was a copy editor 
for the campus newspaper, which had a circulation of about 20,000. So it was a real newspaper. Mm -hmm. um, then my first job was as a technical writer and a technical editor. So I've always had uh, an interest um, in, the, in the mechanics of writing. And certainly as an attorney, you're writing all the time. Yeah. And the more effectively you can write, the better your clients are likely to do. Because before the judge ever sees you in a courtroom, he or she reads your pleadings, mm. the things you file to start the lawsuit. Um, so I, I feel like if, if somebody has a good grasp of novel craft and prose craft, there's almost an obligation to share it. Yeah. Um, it's that part of the job we all share and we all struggle with. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, while we're talking about the teaching, so um, we're, we're recording this um, in July, at the end of July, and of course you're coming down under um, Romance Writers of New Zealand Conference, which is on in a couple of weeks as we go to air, um, and the Romance Writers of Australia, which is on the week after. Um, and you're also doing a little bit of a presentation for the ARA, which is the Australian Romance Readers Association. So what are you going to be doing at all of these, and what will you be talking about? Oh, um, first, uh, we'll talk about prose yep. uh, with my friends in New Zealand, but I'm just so excited to be going. Um, it's a big adventure, and if anybody had told me five years ago, you're going to be making friends all over the world with your writing, I just would not, that would have been a wish come true. Mm -hmm. So I'm very pleased to be going and very honored and flattered. Um, in addition to talking about prose uh, in New Zealand, we're also going to be talking a little bit about how do you keep your balance in such a difficult industry? Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, as writers, what we do is subjective, which means there are uh, writers who may not be particularly talented who are doing quite well. Mm -hmm. Well, there are writers who are very, very talented and working very, very hard, and they don't have a lot of compensation to show for it. Um, and that's daunting. That, that's just tough. Um, and uh, we'll also be talking about the fact that the industry has changed so much so fast. Um, and, you know, what can you do to protect your creativity, protect what I call your joie de plume, your joy of writing, um, and uh, feel a sense of progress even when there may not be a whole lot of money coming in. Because mm. we don't just do this for the money. Mm. It's too hard yep. to just do it for the <laughs> Um, then I'm meeting with readers in Melbourne and Sydney, um, and that's the best fun. You know, the readers are the, they are, I've never met a reader I didn't like. Yeah. Um, I sort of feel like if you get my books, you get me. Yeah. Um, and I've yet to be proven wrong about that. Um, and then at the Sydney conference, I'm talking about why historical romance is still relevant and why I still write mostly historical romance. Um, because I can't see that changing. I just love historical romance, and I feel like it's a good fit for my voice. Yeah. So th that's the itinerary with a lot of frolic and detour thrown in if I'm lucky. <laughs> yeah, hopefully you'll get to, to see a bit of the countries, and I'm going to be at the Romance Writers of New Zealand. I'm all booked in to see you. Um, so that'll be fantastic, and, and the lucky people who get to see you at ARA and um, RWA here. And, of course, you've... Just literally last week, um, we're at uh, the Denver Conference for the Romance Writers of America, um, which I know is going to be, uh, well, are, are very different from um, the conferences down here, a lot more people from what I've heard. Um, do you, you still go every year to the conferences and you keep in touch and still present? I go most years. I mean, sometimes there are just too many deadlines or... Uh the travel logistics, given where else I'm traveling, are a little daunting. Mm. But um, in one regard, I think all of our romance writing conferences are the same. And I couldn't put a name to this feeling until a few years ago. It's a place where I feel like I am a round peg. Yeah. Uh, there, I'm not, it's not a situation where I'm too smart, or I'm too old, or I'm too female, or I'm too outspoken, or I'm too abstract there's uh, when I'm in that environment unlike when I'm being a lawyer or when I'm uh, you know with my neighbors here in rural Maryland I 
fit in more than I fit in in almost any other uh, milieu. Yeah. And um, I didn't, um, oops, uh, there's a dog here um, creating some mischief. <laughs> I was in my 50s the first time I went to a romance writers conference and put my finger on that feeling that um, I'm not an outsider here. Hmm. Now, that said, you can still feel awkward. You don't know anybody. Um, you're shy. You're introverted. And I certainly am introverted. But I still know when I get to these conferences, these are my people. Yeah. And that's a good feeling. Yeah, that's lovely. And um, I know we've got um, Anne Gracie, who every year, and you'll see this at Romance Writers of Australia, she at the um, awards dinner, she does the stand up if you're, you know, wrote a manuscript this year and everyone by the end of it stands up and she says, this is your tribe. These are your people. And it's, it's always just the best part of the conference um, for all of us who attend. And, and that's why I do this podcast so I can talk to people who aren't just mums and they aren't just, um, you know, people in my home, in my town and, you know, there are other writers and you always inspire everyone I get on this podcast inspires me and tells me something new and I love it. So I hope that people watching and, and listening have the, you know, enjoy it as well, the same way I do. So that's just lovely. Um, what's coming out next? You're a very busy woman. <laughs> I am very busy. I recently closed my law practice after 25 years of doing child welfare law. Um, I am now free to just write and write and write and write. So in February, or sorry, in September, let's start and go forward. Um, <laughs> my next Scottish contemporary comes out, which is Scotland to the Max. It's the third book in a Trouble Wears Tartan series, which features usually a Yank and a Scot. Mm. Um, and uh, I have such fun with that series, and the research is just the best. <laughs> uh, then also coming out in September is A Truly Perfect Gentleman, which is a Regency in uh, the True Gentleman series. And I'm putting the finishing touches on that one now while there's a kitten climbing up my leg <laughs> and uh then in november i'm starting a new series with grand central uh and that is the the series is rogues to riches and the first book is my one and only duke and for that book i thought you know dukes we love them but we're getting kind of tired of them mm -hmm. really were there all those dukes in the regency no there weren't so i thought what is the farthest person from a duke now what is the the sort of how far away from a duke can I get and still write a duke book? Mm -hmm. So uh, our hero is uh, convicted of murder, and he's in Newgate awaiting execution. Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> Fun with I got my lawyer yayas out, and I did research on Newgate and banking, and all was the best. <laughs> So I'm very much looking forward to all three of those releases. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, so we can keep in touch with you and see when you've got all these new releases and your covers and everything else, which are beautiful, by the way. Uh, where can we find you online? You can find me at graceburrows.com, but also follow me on BookBub. Um, if, if you want to know when a book goes on sale or when there's a new release, BookBub is very good about just telling you what you want to know and not you know kipping pictures um <laughs> and, you know a lot of uh, facebook nonsense um so i steer people as much I mean, my website you can find the book certainly but um if you follow me on bookbub you'll get the news without the nonsense yeah absolutely and bookbub is definitely just getting bigger and better every time i log on i see something new so yeah that's fantastic so bookbub and your website well, thank you so much for that, Grace. I've really learned a lot and appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Jump onto my website, sarahwilliamsauthor.com and join my mailing list to receive a free preview of my books and lots of other inspiration. If you like the show and want it to continue, you can become a sponsor for just a couple of dollars a month go to patreon.com forward slash Sarah Williams author. And remember to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave a review of the podcast. I'll be back next week with another loved up episode. Bye.